Roberto, if one soul cannot have any pain, GP, what the heck is hurting so much inside of me? The soul doesn't create pain, nor, but I, as I said, it feels it. I mean, what else can feel it? You know, if I go this to my phone, it doesn't feel anything. I do, right? Who's that I that feels? So what's hurting inside of you? What's hurting is the ego's clinging to a particular position and rejecting the experience that it's having, right? And, and thus creating the suffering. The suffering is not circumstantial. The suffering is always our reaction to the circumstance. Always. There's no such thing as suffering in, in life. There's the only suffering is when we are completely out of phase with life and we are resisting it. There was a there was a man who um, uh, visiting um, Nizagadatta Maharaj, <clears throat> and after listening to a while, for a while, he said to to the master, he said, "I I resonate and love everything that I'm hearing you say, but but to tell the truth, I am always experiencing suffering." Legitimate question, right, Nizagadatta? responded to him, he says, no, you're not experiencing suffering. You are suffering your experience. That's it. That's the hurt. Right? And having known you now for, well, over a year, right? It's been a while. Um, you've made rapid, huge strides towards, towards transcending our argument with the way life is. That it should have been different. I should have done stuff differently. Oh, if only I hadn't done this, if I'd done this instead. The, the constant, that's all, that is suffering. Those thoughts are suffering. The circumstances themselves, which those thoughts are saying shouldn't have happened, the circumstances aren't causing the suffering. Because the very same circumstances could happen to somebody else and go, oh, wow, oh, well. Right? If it was the circumstances that created suffering, then anyone who had similar or the same circumstances would also experience suffering. And you know that's not true. It doesn't happen. The same circumstance happening to two different people will have completely different experiences and reactions to it. For one, it's like the worst thing that ever happened. And for somebody else, it's like, oh, well, no big deal. Somebody else might even say, oh, man, this is probably better. <laughs> All the reaction. So what's hurting is not the soul, which is the sentience that allows you to experience anything, right? And believe me, if it wasn't for the soul, you wouldn't be having any hurt, but you wouldn't also have having any pleasure. You wouldn't have any joy. You wouldn't have any, any experience whatsoever. But in order to have an experience, it must be the dance of op opposites. We suffer when, when we want one part of the dance of opposites and not the other. You can't. You can't do it. It's, it, da, 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 it's got to be that, right? It, 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 so if I say it's got to be it and not that, I want nothing but this and not that, you will suffer because you're, you're, you're trying to run contrary to life. You're standing in an ocean during a storm trying to push the waves back out to sea, getting pummeled constantly, going, what's the matter? You, you're trying to do what you can't do. What nobody can do, right? What Buddha can't do it. You cannot make the permanent permanent. You cannot make the opposites. You cannot take one without the other. You, you cannot, you, you must embrace both. And when you do, suffering ends. That's the end of suffering. Most people think, and unfortunately, because of personal development and the law of attraction and all that, we think that we're just going to get into a state where everything is going to go the way we want it to, which is the ultimate delusion in a delusion because it never does. And then everybody blames themselves. Oh, I'm just not working hard. I'm not visualizing hard enough. I'm not meditating long enough. No, it's just one simple, stupid mistake. You're not supposed to. This is the way it's supposed to go. At which point, there's no longer any resistance, and that means no more suffering. That is the end of suffering. The end of suffering happens long before uh, the ultimate enlightenment and Buddhahood. 
can end now. Just recognize that it is only your mind that is creating suffering. And now, if that's the case, then I'm going to pay attention to what my mind is believing. I'm going to be looking at these thoughts. Remember, mind doesn't exist either. <laughs> it's just a collection of thoughts. The ego is a subset, right? It's a collection of thoughts about I, where mind is just the subtotal, sum total of all thoughts, it's thought patterns. There's nothing sentient. There's nothing there. So where's the hurt coming from? It's not the sentience that's aware of the hurt. It's not coming from life, which is just doing what it does. It is this thing in the middle that says and is believed, I don't like that. Who's that I? Is that the soul? Does the soul ever say, oh, I don't like this? You can't, right? Can awareness say that? Can the I say, oh, I don't like this light? It just lets it in, right? Something else arises, a habit of thought, because that's all it is, and arises and says, I don't like this. This shouldn't be this way. I should have done something different. If I, uh, you know the litany, right? None of those thoughts are true, right? And I know you've seen it because you've had those moments of clarity, but now you, you dig in and make this the permanent state. Abide there. Abide as the enlightened witness of these things and not the victim of them. And then you'll be happy. Mm -hmm.